too many seasons of watching Arrow on the CW, the Phantom Zone podcast comes to you in hopes of bringing justice to those that seek it harm, such as Gotham and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We break down every week what we saw, what we liked, what we didn't like, and this is the Phantom Zone podcast. I just finished Supergirl just a couple days ago, catching up, getting ready for the CW after it's been moved from CBS. Really excited for it. Have some great ones. Yep. I'd like to hear some of your guys' other opinions as to what you think of Supergirl, how it's going to join the CW, how was season one, was it good, was it bad? I was kind of hesitant at first going into it because I was afraid it would be too kind of saccharine and kind of uh, too upbeat, and then I was pleasantly surprised. I really enjoyed it. My immediate reaction was, <clears throat> this is like The Flash, but a little bit lighter, just like like an extra scoop of vanilla, uh, an extra drop or so. And it, I, I think it works really well, but I don't know. I like it, and like I've said, uh, the, only reason, the only problem I've ever had with Supergirl is that the looming presence of Superman is very heavily implied to the point where it's so, it's... After about two episodes, you're like, I get it. Right. Oh, yeah. They, they do reference yeah. him incessantly, and it's it does become a little annoying at points. And it's rarely by name. It's always your cousin, your right. cousin, uh, my cousin. Kal-El. Kal-El, yeah. yeah. Clark. I think... I think every time there's a Superman name drop, it's a lawyer on the, like, on the side of the screen going like... <laughs> right. I think where <laughs> it worked the, the least well... I don't know if you've gotten to this point. There's an episode where she's in trouble and she's losing or she's about to die and Jimmy summons Clark. She, oh, he's yeah, using the ring. Yeah, and Superman shows up and you see his boots in his back. Yeah. And it, I really hated that episode and it was one where <laughs> I almost stopped. I was like, wow, that was, that was exactly the thing I did not want to happen in this show. I didn't want them to weaken... Supergirl and make her a character who isn't strong and able to stand on her own, and that bothered me. Weird because that was the entire kind of point of the episode that she was mad that Jimmy called him in the first place. They wrote themselves into a corner by directly having him involved, basically in, in the first episode, and having mentioned him so much in her origin. I guess basically they effectively wrote themselves in the corner, like, well, we can't just have him gone. Right. Yeah, I'm really surprised though that like season two that's coming up is the point that they're actually going to have Superman because they never cast him before that. They just had, oh, look at this blue-red blur stunt double dude. <laughs> That's the problem, though. The guy that cast the Superman looks is smaller than that guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know how I feel about that guy either. He looks funny. Oh, you mean Derek <laughs> Hale? <laughs> Der- Derek like, Hale, my favorite what? person ever. That's his Teen Wolf name, for those who are unaware. Uh, you put him next to Henry Cavill, and you're like, Henry Cavill's a man-god, and you're you. I mean, if they didn't already have Brandon Routh as the Adam, that would be a great choice, too. Yeah. Or Tom Welling. Part of me wanted them to do that, but then... Look, guys, they've already got they've already got one Superman in the show. They can't fit anymore, okay? Dean Cain's already there. That's true. <laughs> still, I'm, I'm still confused on how that storyline works. In I'm which just waiting for them to introduce Tim Daly. <laughs> I'm really confused of how like Dean Kane is in there, but he's not in the whole season, but yet he exists because one line's where the general colonel dude where uh, Martian Manhunter Oh Guardian. Uh, mine, yeah. Mine uh reads him as and he's like, Oh, he's alive and I'm like And Cadmus. Then why have we not seen Dean Kane the whole entire season? Like, well, it's weird too, and I I had that problem going into because I saw him in the first episode. I was like, "Holy crap, it's Dean Cain! That's fucking Superman, right. um, a Superman anyway." And then like I saw him then, and then like two episodes later, I'm like, "Where's Dean Cain?" Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> he he was relegated to flashbacks, and I, I still don't quite know why. But that's a terrible use of the character. But I guess he might have a more bigger role in this next season. I also, like, like it's what? almost. It's an inverse of like them casting a uh, ship as Flash's dad, because mm-hmm. that's a yeah. clear reference to the old show, uh, and he's yeah. prominently, and he's kind of a he's a very good portion of the show, I think. And then like you have Dean Cain, who was Superman, and he's just like he's like hi, and he disappears. I think that I'm might be a CBS thing. 
as to far as um, utilizing Dean Kane um, as much as they can. Because it's a shame to not use him in, as some sort of a, a hook for uh, some fans. Yeah. I mean, exactly. And I also think that um, as far as Superman actually being cast in season two, I'm wondering if this is kind of them attempting to kick the door open for having like the big three on TV. Yeah. If it worked, we might see Batman on TV. And that... <laughs> I mean, you mean Gotham? It's gonna be Jim Gordon. It's gonna be Jim Gordon, and I'm gonna <laughs> put a goddamn pistol in my mouth. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, God but damn. Uh, I hate that show. <laughs> but um, I, I don't know. I hope he actually shows. To hear there. more about us ranting on Gotham, you can your episode zero. <laughs> episode zero, where we where we piss over Gotham. Um, I honestly, I'd rather see him show up on Arrow or Legends. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, they kind if, of like, Legends, Legends goes to like. Actually, I think I'd like it on Legends better because they can go to weird Dark Knight Returns future and see a big, puffy, 55-year-old, pissed-off Batman. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean... Well, technically, they already had their Batman moment with yeah. well, that's one-armed what... Oliver Queen. Which is weird because, yeah, yeah you reference half of that equation and then you can... It, Let's you save that for the Legends talk. Back, cut his arm off again. Let's save that for the Legends talk. But Supergirl, yeah. yeah um, like The best episode of Supergirl this season, or one of them... Is the flashback episode with John Jones? Uh, I don't know if you got to that point, Connor, but you see John Jones and Dean Kane. They're like uh, trying to survive the wilderness, and there's I don't remember exactly what happens in the episode. Uh, CR, the, um, you probably remember. Uh, DEO, yeah, the DEO um, director guy. He uh, comes in and uh, shoot, sees the Martian there, the target they're hunting. Um, and goes to fire on him, and then Dean Kane um, jumps uh, and like wrestles the dude to the ground to try and save the Martian, and then they roll off a cliff together, and then no, the that's Martian. Not what <laughs> that's what happens. No, that's yeah, not what happens. Yeah, D- Dean Kane get turns got some got wounded somehow. Hank, the real Hank Henshaw, fell off the cliff. Well, they were wrestle they were wrestling or like tumbling or something. It was weird. And yeah. they, like, died together of some sort. Like, packed suicide off a cliff. And then, um, Martian Manhunter, uh, John Jones, comes back to the D.O., like, I believe it was, like, a month or so after, as the head of the organization. Right. Oh, so he effectively takes Hank Henshaw's place, like, he... Yeah. He yes. goes to Harrison Wills. Okay. Yeah. Actually, it is very like, Harrison yeah, Wells, yeah. now that you point it out. I wonder where they got that idea from. Oh, yeah. I mean... It's like, you know... Weird That's... to have one character actually secretly be another popular DC character. I mean, at some point... I do like the misdirection, he... though, because as soon as they said, he's like, oh, I'm Hank Henshaw, I'm like, oh, come on, really? You're going to be fucking Cyborg Superman? And then the complete misdirection of having him revealed to be... This was revealed long before I even started the show, that he was Marshall Manhunter. I was like, oh, bravo. Yeah. <laughs> and then also on Supergirl, uh, this past season, we saw an episode of Red Tornado. Uh, yeah. I was not a fan of that episode. He looked like the Tin Man. He looked like the Tin Man. Yeah. He was the Tin Man, effectively. The but CGI I, was terrible. I thought that was a... The CGI, just the, the regular... No, it was practical. Like, yeah, all the practical stuff, like, I'm like, you look like the Tin Man if someone's spray That was me. practical? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it was a that dude that's face painted. Yeah, I was not, like, and I think my friend Josh was like, he's like, I like the show. And then I got to the Red Tornado episode and laughed and laughed. Yeah, it's kind of cheesy, and it doesn't really work. And I personally thought the weather effects from... Season one of The Flash were better than the tornado effects in that episode, which really uh, disappointed me. It was a different. Um, it was CBS doing it, so I right. can't, can't expect high prior, high, high right. expectations. Well, and see, it was one thing I was worried about going to Supergirl. I was like, okay, how's it going to look as far as like all the special effects go? And like at some points, I was kind of like the. Uh, I was impressed, like the fist fight between Kara and the alien episode one, where like they tear up a whole road. Oh yeah, I was, really cool. I was awesome. And a lot of the uh, a lot of the action sequences I think are pretty cool looking. They they're nice and um they're not very um downplayed. To the effect. It's like oh we have a budget to worry about. Like no people like get punched through like debris and they get knocked into the air and punched back down. Like it looks like super powered fights. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. There's some really cool stuff. Like there's a I, I think it's like a mid season point where it's just Supergirl fighting twenty other aliens or whatever, and they all have like kryptonite guns. I think or no maybe it's the Lord soldiers who have kryptonite guns but it's just like this big melee and it's really well done for a tv show 
I do like the guy who plays Maxwell Lord. I think he's good. He's he oozes uh, dislikability instantly in, in the best way, and he's well. He was in Twilight. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Exactly. That's. I was like, where do I know him from? And why don't I like his face? And I didn't think that. I don't think you could find a better Lex Luthor stand-in. I don't think it's possible. That's clearly the role that yeah, they've given there's him. There's no question that this show is basically the Superman version that they've adapted to have a female Superman, uh, a different Lex Luthor. Jimmy Olsen isn't Jimmy Olsen. He's basically Lois Lane. And, and they even have a Lane. Uh, it's like player two Lois Lane. Like they're bringing her oh, cousin, yeah. her sister. What the hell is she supposed her to be? Her sister. Or it's not Lana it's Lane, sister. is it? No, it's... um it's Lucy. No, she's like the, the Princess Daisy, the Princess Peach of the Mario universe. It's like, I'm not Lois Lane. I'm right. her sister. Cat Grant, who just steals every episode of that show. Initially, I was very... I was like, oh... She seemed very one note. And then like on a dime, uh, became very uh in-depth and interesting and very much like harrison wells i was like you are the most interesting person in the show yes the uh, crossover when um, flash goes over um she has this one line where it's barry and then um supergirl and then jimmy olsen all them saying together and when and she says the line you all look like the cast of a cw show <laughs> <laughs> no it's you all standing there not doing anything look- look like a non-threatening yet appealing cast of a CW show. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and I just laugh my ass off. She also gets some of the best jokes, like, are on network television, at least. Just... No, it's very, um, it's it's, it's very Devil Wears, uh, Devil Wears Prada-ish. I like that. Yes. Um, definitely. Definitely. Especially because she's like, she, she, like, she cuts car like, all the time with her words. Um, the car has to sit there and take it. She's like, I could break you with my pinky, but okay. Also, in regards to Jimmy Olsen, I've always envisioned Jimmy Olsen as kind of like wormy reporter guy, and the fact that he's in this show as a sort of like a Gap model, I think is hysterical. Yeah, but I, I like I like how that works because, but you could see him once being that person. You could see him once being a shorter, skinnier guy who kind of met Superman and is like, you know, I should get in shape and I should look the part, look like I'm a handsome dude. Who I'm picks up ladies? Friend. I can't look like this. Yeah. His job is like photography, so he's got to at least look good on camera, right? Yeah. I, also, like I it, kind of pre- I prefer Smallville's version of Jimmy Olsen. It, I mean, it was Henry Olsen. Look, it could be worse. He could get shot in the face. No. Yeah. Wasn't there actually Jimmy Olsen? <laughs> what in, in, in the Superman? There was, Smallville. I think. Oh. No. Uh, well, technically, they had a character who, with the middle name Jimmy. Oh. And his kid brother was a real Jimmy. They did that thing in, in Man of Steel too, where they included his sister as opposed to including him, basically in in uh, his job role at the Daily Planet. Yeah, and then they made him a CIA agent and shot him in the face in the first yes five minutes. Um, because that's what the world needed. No Man of Steel yes. talk. Never mind. No, Zach, no BVS Zach talk. Snyder murder verse. We we also shed on Zack Snyder a little bit yes, uh, the last episode. Yeah, so, we did. Uh, yeah. A little bit too much, I think. Yeah. Uh, no, we did, we did say some positive things. We, we did. Yeah, like I said, his, his first three movies, I think, are almost perfect. We, um, but anyway. We, we praised um, him. Uh, yeah, Supergirl. Anybody have like any final thoughts on Supergirl? Any Anything that they really want to point out? It is the... Uh, it's the perfect to go side-by-side with The Flash because... Primary colors. That is actually the one thing I'm looking forward to in the show is getting to that flashback episode because I saw that one publicity picture of them like kind of big ring together and I was like, that's fucking adorable. I can't wait to see them on screen together. Oh, it's it's great. And they are very similar shows and of all of the CW, CBS shows, they're the two that have the most similarities. The plotting is very similar and a lot of the same twists happen from one show to the other, like we said with the Hank Henshaw thing. So they are most alike, even more alike than Arrow and Flash ever were, and Legends is its own thing, of course. Yeah. Some would say they're the reverse. Don't bum, try that, my bum, bum. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you only have one mother I can kill, okay? All right, so if anybody doesn't have <laughs> anything else to say about Supergirl... I think we better just move on to Flash. Connor, I think you should start off our Flash talk. Because oh, flash okay, um, 
So we, I said we, we basically said we're going to speed run through Flash season one, or at least cover the important stuff of season one. Which actually, in, I've been rewatching season two lately, um, and I started picking up on things in season two that I thought were interesting. And now season two seemed to be all about trying to move past everything that happened in season one and trying to get over all these weird humps that they've all gotten. And ultimately, no one does, or at least Barry doesn't. Barry can he can't. There's well, yeah, that's his basically. problem. That's his. At the end of the show, for him to be a full character, he has to get over himself and get over his emotional baggage. Uh, and that's something I would like to see, like in the last episode, assuming this DC CW universe does end at some point, I want him to have moved past these things. Because if, at the end of this next season, if he does what he did at the end of this season, I don't think I could support him as a character. Uh, anyone? Well, and I, 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 I say it all the time, like, Barry, you goofed. Um, he does it a lot. He, he often is his own worst enemy. Um, yes. But in, uh, there was one thing in season two where he is talking, not talking to, but he's talking basically behind a uh, glass window to Earth to Harrison Wells, and he's like, he's like, no, you're not him, you're not, the, you're not the man who killed my mother, and he's like, and I forgive you, and he's like, even though I don't have to, or something like that. The very next episode, Eobar Thong comes back. Right. Um. And so I think it's basically like season two was barreled with the idea of like there's all this stuff that's constantly being presented in the way of basically everyone trying to get over their um, all this emotional trauma they've had. Even down to Caitlin Snow, who lost Ronnie, got him back again, lost him again, got Jay, and then lost Jay. Iris tries to get over Eddie, ultimately doesn't, or yeah. well, ultimately does. She Goes does. Date, realizes it's not working, then falls in love with Barry, then Barry fucking undoes it. Yeah. <laughs> I did like the moment where Barry shows her the video of Eddie. That we... was soul crushing. Yes, because I'm am still not over Eddie's death. Because you you don't really see the video again. You see mostly her face, if I remember cor- correctly. You see her yeah, reaction. You see her reaction to it. Which is almost better. Yeah, you're you're showing not telling. And it and just, then through all this, I think ultimately you have to talk about Zoom because he is also the big thing that Barry can't get over. Because, like Joe says, he says you didn't get Eobard Thawn, Eddie did. Um, I think that's kind of what is pushing Barry to do all these kind of stupid things for the season. Like at several points after the halfway mark, especially in the versus Zoom episode, he has him dead to rights and stops. And he's like, Mah-ha! and he like gloats for five minutes, and then Zoom kicks his ass again. I kind of realized something watching when I did my rewatch of season two it's essentially the same story the story pattern sold over and over I mean, yeah. yeah right up and right 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 into the my name is barry allen i'm not and i'm not the fastest man alive they did yeah. that twice now yeah they have and well, it, even and even zoom is a is almost a mirror image of the entire harrison wells reverse flash reveal because once again and i guess it works to its favor again it's trying to co- overcome things and get past things and like Barry trusts someone else, and they they threw it back in his face again. Um, so I think it actually probably would make him a little more angry. But yeah, Jay Garrick was Hunter's Almond the entire time, which is still somewhat perplexing because then you have the whole time remnant thing, which I don't. Yeah, I don't still understand don't, it. Like, get how that works. Timey wimey. Yes. Hand wavery. We'll get, we'll get the Doctor. We'll get the Doctor Who jokes and legend tomorrow. Yes. Because um, so there's so many to make. Um, I also think Zoom is, like, kind of... I did like Zoom because Tony Todd's voice is mesmerizing. Oh, it's, um, it's fantastic. And I, think he was, and I think he was much more physically terrifying than Thawne was. Um, but as I mean, far as, I guess, the philosophy and just, like, what motivates them, I think Thawne was a better villain because Zoom was like, I'm angry! And that's basically his entire thing. He just likes killing people, and that's really it. Which, well, yeah. Like, it's simplistic, and it kind of works, but... Well, Thawne's yeah. whole thing was like, I just want to go home, and all of you are preventing me from doing that. Right. I think first Flash, I think it had some more better points because you have the backstory of a man in all yellow killing his um, mother. Right. I think that helps with a little bit more to the Thawne background rather than a man, a fast Flash character all in black with blue lightning showing up. Not much backstory to it. Yeah. So more people would have an attachment towards the reverse flash. Also, once... Well, so I think, I think with Thawne that you got more... You got a, you immediately had a mystery planet because they wasted no time in season one by 
they set you up with the man in yellow and then immediately establish Harrison Wells as someone who is completely crooked and you have no idea what kind of what game he's playing. Um, right. Because he stands up in the first episode and you're like, all right, this guy's clearly a liar. And by the time and that it, reveal yeah, where he yeah. says, you freak and out a little. Even then, like, yeah, you freak the fuck out. My friend, uh, I got my friend George to watch it and he just sends me a text message. He's like, okay. He's like, why did Harrison Wells just talk like reverse flash into the camera? I was like, ta-da! Because all the way up to the end of that episode, you're pretty much convinced you're deceived into thinking, like, well, that can't be reverse flash. Right. How is he kicking his own ass? Yeah, and yeah, it's and he's moving so fast that it looks like he's in two places at once. Or was it that there's a hologram? I can't remember which. Either either one works. It was it was it's both. A plot hole. Cause, cause, well, it is a, it, yeah, it's both. Uh, it is some of a plot hole because Cisco discovers the first segment of the conversation is a hologram because. He plays that back because it's like, oh, I'm not like the Flash at all. Someone's saying I'm the reverse and says, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. I think everything after it initiates Harrison Wells and the hologram's talking to him, I think once the reverse Flash is kicking Harrison Wells' ass, I think it's him being a speed mirage in two places at once. It's still mm-hmm. kind of like, eh, that's a very flimsy explanation, especially when you consider, like, Harrison Wells was supposed to be in that little chamber right. beating the shit out of. Um, and then all of a sudden, he's also outside beating the shit out of Barry. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird. It's it's, it's I do, almost like they wanted they wanted their cake and wanted to eat it too. I do think when they kind of when they did that again in season two, and they set the trap for Zoom, and you think that they're actually maybe gonna catch him for a second, and then he just shows up and he kicks Barry's ass harder than we've seen anybody else ever do it. The closest thing that to this that we've ever seen is maybe fighting Grodd, which is almost impossible. And yeah. Just when he throws the lightning back at him, that's the moment where your entire brain says, oh, he's dead. He's not getting out of this. Are they about to kill the main character? Well, I mean, they're not, of course. It's a CW show. Well, well, but... We can get to that in a moment. That did happen later on. Um, but no, yeah, I still think Thawne was a better villain. Um, I also like that Zoom had the ability to, and this goes right into when Barry supposedly dies towards the end of the season, they replicate a Infinite Earths. Um, Barry gets blown up and Zoom just like shows up and he's like you guys fucked up and he left <laughs> <laughs> he runs in he's like and now he's dead and then just leaves and like who is watching the doors and Star Labs my big question about Star Labs is who's keeping the lights on right who's who's paying who's paying dim bills who's, who's paying for all that tech and concert generator what does Harrison Wells have like residuals from 15 years ago just coming right in yeah probably <laughs> oh, this is probably radioactive. He left it to Barry. Looks, uh, blew up. Actually, that's something I hadn't considered. Maybe he did leave it to Barry. Yeah, no, you're right. It he says, did. It's one. He, but still, you have, to from... pay, you have to pay taxes and stuff, even on stuff that's been given to you. So you would have to pay the taxes on that facility, which is gigantic. The taxes on that facility would be more than he will earn on the police force in his entire lifetime. Unless I'm... It is a lot. But we're getting... We're getting way too technical. Um, just something DC I know. Universe but... lives outside the realm of taxation. <laughs> yes. They don't have taxes. It's a, it's a much better world than ours, just for that reason alone. Yes, indeed. Um, and, everyone, and everyone's extremely interactive. Uh, I have to say, from it's the like Christmas Canada. episode, running the standstill. Yeah. My favorite part of, of that was uh, Cisco saying, when... Uh, Caitlin and Jay are talking. He's like, "Come on, the thirst is real." Oh yeah, oh, I love Cisco. Um, actually, him, in regards to, in regards him to him getting in and out of Star Labs, I think he was like, "He's like, yep, Star Labs is as secure as will ever be." And Jay Garrett just walks in. He's like, "Dude, what? For real?" <laughs> yeah. But him and Harry, they had the best scenes. Oh, I did love it, and. Uh, playing who when he's masquerading as Harrison when he's just being full on uh, Wells of Bard and when he's Earth 2 Harrison Wells Earth 2 Harrison Wells is a giant dick right and they're just they're so completely different from each other they feel utterly opposite people it's amazing yeah and actually technically there's four performances because you get brief flashbacks of when he was true Harrison Wells before uh, Thawne steals his body right and he's just a total dweeb (laughs) 
Yeah, he's a total nerd. The, the whole uh, the whole uh, test thing is like, yeah, we'll call it test. And even his girlfriend's like, you're an idiot. Let's call it this. And then you have, uh, you know, fake Harrison, who is, uh, admittedly, I will say, and this is what me and a buddy of mine were talking about, the one, uh, George, uh, he's very fatherly to everybody. Even when he is still behind the scenes, you know, yeah. total villain. And I think in the, in the Firestorm episode in season one, he does something that's ultimately for the greater good of everybody. He, he even says, he's like, he's like, okay, if I use this to, you know, stop the Firestorm exploding, he's like, this is going to delay my chances of going home. And Gideon's like, yes, he's like, and he does it anyway. Right. He does something completely selfless. And that's, I think that's what does go to your point of last season's villain being better because you do get this extra dimension of he still cares about all of them to some degree. And it's just once they once they interrupt him, once Cisco finds out what's been going on all along and he can blow this whole thing for him, that's when he has to kill Cisco and cause an entire plot line in the first season that leads into the second season. It yeah. does make him better than Zoom in a lot of ways. As a villain. Yeah, and then like I said, and then Zoom's whole arc was like, I just want speed. Like as, as the season two like drew a close he just gets more psychotic seemingly for no reason like he just gets more murderous and violent and basically only because they revealed him as a serial killer and that's seemingly the only reason he gets as mad as he does yeah well actually if you notice the episode with trajectory she was not so she was acting pretty psychotic when she was when she took the v9 was it the man in that way v9 bossy nine yeah which was Boston actually nine used by the rival, or the gold, a.k.a. the Golden Age Reverse Flash, Edward Claris, against Jay Garrick. Oh, that's right, yeah, I do remember hearing about that. But then I guess we should cover what ultimately happens to Zoom, and why I don't think well, that's just pure there's something service. I wanted to say that, or before we get to that, Zoom is also a representation of what Barry could have, what a road Barry could have gone down. Yeah, and that is something I like yeah, about totally. his character. He is literally a mirror image of Barry, in almost every single way. And even oh, down... Oh, no, you're right. Actually, that is stuff I forgot because even their origin stories are paralleled because it, right. it's in Hunter's origin, his father does go crazy and kill his mother in front of him. And in Barry's life, it was, you know, someone else did and Barry's father took the fall for it. Right. And it's... Yeah, and, it, and they even... They allude to that when the reveal of uh, the real Jay Garrick being from Earth 3, or what we're calling Earth 3, at least... Um, but yeah, it's, it's, but it is very interesting the way that they play that and how you do, you do see how if the thing, if things had been reversed, Barry could have become this monster very easily. Yeah. And they even, they even cover their childhood real quick. Well, they cover Hunter's childhood where instead of being adopted by a, a big hearted police officer with a, a daughter who he can buddy up with, Hunter is passed through the, the. Basically, the system. The, the system. He's passed the system and, and screwed. Like he's just right. he's, he gets warped. He gets he gets worse and worse and worse. Um, already a damaged kid gets you know put into a, a basically a careless environment and becomes a monster because of it. Yeah. And I haven't read the the Jeff Johns Flash stuff involving Zoom. It's completely different, and I haven't even read it. But yeah, so it's... they basically pulled the they pulled the Age of Ultron where they just lifted the name. They lifted the oh, name. And here's the thing, and this is where it can probably create some confusion with people who are trying to get into comics. Because even the title Reverse Flash is confusing as hell because there have been five of them. Right. Yeah. Because um, Eobard Thawne is Professor Zoom, the Reverse Flash. And then you have Hunter Zolomon, who is also a Reverse Flash. Um, and doesn't he even use the title of Zoom? Yeah. yeah. Professor Zoom. Yeah, so you have two Professor Zooms who also call themselves uh, Reverse Flash. Who have completely different sets of powers, or at least like methods of powers. Like, doesn't uh, Hunter Zolomon like manipulate? He he's not using the speed force. Like, it's something else. He's slowing down time. Is my understanding, yes. and he's yeah. so by stopping time, he's faster than any speedster currently yes. existing. Yes, and then you have the the rival who was uh, Velocity Nine. Yeah, then Edward you had Danny, Yeah, Edward, yeah. Then you had Danny West, who yeah. was the the whole black and orange costume. There was one more, wasn't there? I can't remember who that one was. Well, other than the new one, who isn't the same thing, but technically he's... Yeah, and then Zoom in the show, Zoom in the show is basically a weird amalgam, and this is where I was going to get to with what happens to him, a, a, a weird combination of, like, Black Flash and uh, Hunter's Alden. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
speaking of Black Flash, um, the ending of season two where um, he's uh, zooms part in the um, particle accelerator, whatever that was, um, where like it's iconic imagery of the Black Racer, I guess it would be. Yeah, right. yeah that's to me like, way more like it was too like, specific for fan service. Like, ah, look at that, it's a reference. I'm like, no, that's him. Like, that, that's the yeah. fucking Black Flash. Yeah. I think he's going to become, like, the voice of the time wraiths, of the whatever controls them. That's what role it's he'll have. Force. Right. He'll be sort of a... He, they're sort of enforcer that comes through the timeline to fix things. And yeah, he'll partner up with the time wars, wraiths and, like, in exchange to stop Barry or whatever. Wh- right. I can say back to Tom Cavanaugh, um, the episode where Barry goes back to meet uh, Thawne again. Yes. Uh, with tremendous, yeah, was probably one of the highlights of season two for me because one, again, Tom Cavanaugh is like blowing it out of the water. Right. Um, and two, the continuity between that episode from season one and this one was astounding. Oh, yes. It's so perfectly recreated that you believe yeah. for a second that maybe they planned this. Maybe they planned an entire season ahead, which is impossible, but maybe they did. And it's And it really works well. I thought the ending was great when, um, when, uh, damn it, um, Harley. Yes, when he, when he, they, uh, AKA five, five, five. yeah, when Barry comes back and his, his work in the past has affected the future and Harley's right. now part of Team Flash, basically. I thought yeah. it was really cool. The He's... best part about that, in the Flash, when I was reading, I, I read uh, the, uh, Van Jensen, uh, terrible Flash run before Rebirth. They had Pied Piper be a good guy. They had Henry Allen alive. Oh, okay. Hmm. They basically just were copying stuff from the show. Really? Oh, interesting. All right. It's interesting it, when that happens. Was, no way good. <laughs> <laughs> shade. That wasn't shade. That was pretty direct. But yeah, like I like it's a very Doctor Who moment where he says, "Guys, you have a year to work on this. You have a year year to make this work to get this right." And then when he gets there, they've already figured it out and they've already figured He's out like, how oh to. Oh my god, you guys! God, they're like, yeah, just give us two seconds. <laughs> But yeah, that well, was... no, it didn't work at first. Yeah, it didn't work. Yeah, because then, then Harley comes back in, he's like, I got this. He's like, I have, I finally figured it out. Or low frequency, high intensity. Yeah, that in the moment where he, um, where, in a positive note where he says, um, I'm going to do it like, with my parents. Like, ult- Barry ultimately messing with the past brought about something positive. Yeah, that was, I really liked that scene. All right, does anybody have any other big points about The Flash? I mean, just what happens in the end and going to season three. Uh, another thing I want to say is, uh, are we not going to talk about, well, there's some, some things I want to talk about, like the introduction or the uh, characters that they introduced. Well, we, yeah, I guess real Jay Garrick is definitely worth talking about because I think he's going to be in Lizards of Tomorrow. Yeah, and we can talk uh, about um, Wally, I guess. Wally? What, what about King Shark? <laughs> King oh, Shark. Let's talk about King Shark. <laughs> Who was voiced by David Hayter, a.k.a. Solid Snake. No, he wasn't. He was. I fa- I, IMDb did. Well, well, I mean, IMDb is not best source. Look, IMDb has said that Mortal Kombat 3 has been in production for about 15 years. Right. <laughs> Just like okay. Todd McFarlane. Hey. Yeah. <sighs> let's, let's avoid this. Let's avoid I swear that. to God, guys, we're getting a Spawn movie. I don't know why I gave him that accent, but I almost <laughs> made him Stan Lee. <laughs> He yeah, like Martin Sheen. I swear to God, guys, we're gonna get a spawn movie before I die. Now he's now he's John Kennedy. <laughs> For a second, I tried to do that lisp that Todd McFarlane Make has. Make up your mind, Seth McFarlane. <laughs> Seth McFarlane. Pick a day. Seth McFarlane. That's family guy. Yeah. I would love if the two yeah. teamed up. The McFarlanes yeah. came together to. McFarlane. McFarlane. Well, I mean. Pro- Latching onto Seth MacFarlane's coattails is probably the only way Top Nefar can get a salon we made. Yeah. True. It would oh, be terrible, but it Okay. That was Tom our spawn like, minute. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. It might actually happen that way. Okay, so I didn't like Wally at first. Am I the like Am I the lone person? Sure. They gave him a weird, like, persona. Like, they gave him, like, someone that he didn't really care for. He kind of just wanted to be on his own and kind of be a bratty kid, I guess, to Joe and Iris. Yeah. and Treated Joe. Yeah. Like he'd done something wrong when Joe was completely oblivious of the entire situation. Like Joe had no, like he's like, oh yeah, for detective, you're not really good at your job. Didn't you know you had a son? I'm like, yeah, because he had no reason to think you existed. And he he definitely got better. 
I would say the episode where his mother actually bites it. Um, that episode, spoilers. yeah, spoiler, spoilers. Uh, that episode, you really see. Okay, this kid up until now, he hasn't been. I don't think he's been given the best material. He does have some ability as an actor, and I bet that scene with his mother is what got him the job. He was very dry for a bit. Um, he was very uh, dry in one note with the whole kind of like uh, flippant attitude and kind of just being resentful. Yeah. And being a dick to Barry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, the White Shadow line I thought was a little weird. He kind of evened out, I thought. Um, I did find it, I mean, it changed. I found it annoying when he became obsessed with The Flash because I don't think he did that very well, but he did that better than he played the spoiled kid and the angry teenager. So I am a little bit mixed well, on gave, that. It gave him some sort of purpose that you could re- you could get behind, as opposed to looking at him going like, "We stop being such a brat." Right. And then after that, I think he really started to grow, especially once he met the Jesse Quick character, and after going to the other Earth or whatever, getting stuck there, finding out about Barry's identity, it made his character fuller in a very similar way to how Candace, uh, the girl who plays um. What's her name? Iris. In the same way that I think her character yeah. became Iris, better. Iris wasn't very likable for the first chunk of season one either, and then yeah. kind of, you know, again, steps out of that and changes a little well, bit. Well, they try and, like, match her up more to be um, Barry's love interest. Right. A mutual love interest, rather than, I guess, the sister. Yeah. Yeah. And they also, because they stopped trying to keep keep everything secret from her, and she could participate, it made... For some reason, it made her performance better. I think because they were able to write more interesting stuff for her, once again. Yeah, I know, I, I agree totally. Um, and I'm kind of excited to see where Wally goes, despite that costume being horrendous. But I'm really yeah. About that. What's the other... Especially when you see, like, you can see two-thirds of his head. Yeah, that was... That's bothersome. Who are you? I have no idea who you could possibly be. Yeah. I did see... Actually, I did, I did see in one promo, he was using the same uh, vibrating thing for his face that... um. Uh, Reverse Flash is doing. And even Barry did that, like, fourth episode, third episode, something like that, uh, to hide his identity from Iris when they were on the roof of yeah. uh, Jitters. Okay, real quick, was there, was there another character who was introduced that we can talk about uh, very quickly? Uh, we can talk about the real Jay Jay Garrett. Garrett. Okay. Yeah. I thought uh, he was John Wesley interesting. He, he didn't feel John that Wesley different from Barry's father to me, so I didn't really... I don't think we got a good enough sample size of what he's like, We personally. didn't. Um, the most you get out of him is kind of how resentful he is of Zoom stealing his costume. Yeah. Um, and that glimmer of pride he has when he puts it back on, which was weird, because it was very different from the costume that Jay Garrett wore. Yeah. It's almost like someone knew, like, oh, you're a much bigger guy than Jay Garrick is. Mm-hmm. Which I will say, when he, when he had that suit on, Jay Gar- uh, uh, John Wesley Ship looked like a giant. Yeah, yeah he's yes, he did. He's, yeah. A, he's a very large man. But I think John Wesley Ship all throughout season two was tremendous, and he was killing me when, when he was doing that speech to Bear right before Zoom put his hand through his chest. <sighs> I really, 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 like, the most really as I can possibly think of, want Earth 3 to really just be the old TV show with um, Mark Hamill and uh, John Wesley Ship. Yes. And I would quick be note, okay Mark Hamill was tremendous again in season two as Trickster. Oh yeah, he was great. Yeah. Yeah. And I love, good in everything he does. I love that Cold has a code and he just says, I'm I'm not doing this. Uh, it's not my style to team up. And that, that was... Yeah, I, I think, yeah, he just... Wentworth Nord was a quick mention because he was kind of graduated to Legends tomorrow, but like, I think his character really started to show the, um, the evolution that we got in Legends tomorrow fully in season two when, one, he kills his father. Um... Yes. Two, he starts to act like a human being when his sister's in trouble. And then three, in that moment when he goes to Flash's house and he's like, they want to kill you and I'm just not all about that. Right. And all, he, you know, we have a deal and I'm, I'm, I'm good with that deal. That was, yeah, that was a, yeah. that was a great moment. All right. It shows he has, and then even Barry says like, you have honor and you're just afraid to admit it. He's like, ah, whatever. And he leaves. Right. But Arrow! Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'll... get on to Arrow. All right. The entire time you guys were talking about Captain Gold, I just had that image that Honor always uses. <laughs> <laughs> the the cup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Barry mouse Riddle ears. Barry. Okay. Arrow, the 
biggest disappointment in the history of all television ever, period. Wasn't ever. it so disappointing that everybody just started watching Daredevil in the Reddit form? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I... Okay, they turned yeah, it into I, a, a I, Daredevil yeah, thread. They just turned into a Daredevil thread, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. That is insane. Because Daredevil is mean, a better version of Arrow. <laughs> Sadly. Okay, what else are they going to watch? I have not caught up on Arrow. I'm still working my way through season three. Um, <sighs> see, I, my quick impression no. One was that season stop. one. Sure to get it. stop. <laughs> stop season three and pretend it doesn't exist. Just well, sweep it under the rug, yeah. like I am going to. In my mind. Wait a minute, you're, you're still season catching up on season three? Did you say or season four? Three. I'm not, I haven't gotten to season four yet. Oh um, God. <laughs> I know everyone's like, I, I got an error real fast. Like the first few episodes, I was interested in, and then like as soon as I realized there was like. Anywhere between four and six relationship dramas happening at once, I was like, what is even happening here? And then when they were flashed back into the island, I'm like, this is the interesting shit, I want to see this. Season two is still, it's still the high season of Arrow. And it, yeah. and it's so perfectly it's down, exemplified in that last action scene, or double action scene, where it's the final fight on the island between Slade and Oliver, intercut between the final fight in the city. And it's, it's, yeah perfect it's movie level editing and timing and it feels cinematic because it is so well put together and they i want to cut it real quick um i didn't mean season three i need to sweep under the rug i mean three and four mostly four four is hey there was one good episode that was with john constantly really because it wasn't the final one of the season the worst episode is the b episode um, no, the worst episode was the way they left it at the end. That that was bad. I didn't like the nuclear missiles. Um, but okay, I heard about that. Can I weigh something on that real quick? Even though I've never seen it, but I do have a point to make about that. Yeah. Um, but I saw Dark Knight Rises. I was pretty much on board with everything, despite how silly the movie is. I still love Dark Knight Rises. I don't care what anybody says. Um, however, I think when you bring a nuclear bomb into a situation with a hero that does not have superpowers, this is no longer on the same scale. You have blown this up, no pun intended, to a point where you need a higher power. You need... This right. Is, this is the National Guard. This is the Army. This is the government. This is a nuclear fucking bomb. Yeah. It's it, not visually... The thing is, this wasn't one nuclear bomb. This was enough nuclear bombs to turn the Earth into a wasteland... And it oh, just fuck this. Oh, it, I'm sorry. I was pissed <laughs> I'm sure off I'm when I found out that's what it was. And it's but the problem with the show in this fourth season is it's just so inconsistent. There would be episodes that would be good. They would be fun and they'd be interesting and the action would be good. And maybe and the story At wouldn't let you down. Oliver Queen goes to find someone that uses magic to fight Damien Dark, the magic, the big villain, I guess, as it were, for this season. Even though two episodes earlier, he learned how to use magic. Right. And it, he can't use it. Yeah. I mean, and there's so many but, things that they do well. The Vixen episode is really good. And it's really exciting. But then, like, the next episode was something terrible. And they just went back and forth. Like, again, the B episode... Which is an episode where the bee villain from the Flash season one, the girl who controls bees. Oh, that's yeah. what you're talking about? Oh, yes. They oh, bring God. her back, and they give her a bodyguard who is a man made out of robotic bees. Oh, he's what's-his-face from Melgar Solid 3. Yes. <laughs> and she oh, has surrounded the entire the building <laughs> with bees so that nobody's cell phone works. It's... It's a, it's ridiculous, and she's making bee puns the entire time. Oh, of course. Uh, well, I skip out um, on that opportunity. Here, you guys can keep, you keep BSing about this. I'm gonna get some water. Yeah, it's just I can't handle I can't handle Arrow. I might not watch this new season, and I'm I don't know. I'm hoping I'm praying to Berlanti, the deity above all DC shows, yeah. that some at some somehow. Flashpoint affects Arrow enough that it makes it good. Maybe. I mean, they made a real strong step in killing Laurel last season. I 
Even though I don't like the way that they handled her death. Because they brought her back and didn't really care about that. Yeah. And they just... They didn't do very... They didn't do enough with it. Right. Well, they brought her back in Flash. And I actually liked that. That was the best performance I've seen out of Katie Cassidy ever since she was on Supernatural. Um, Which is saying a lot. Uh, And... Yeah, she was so wasted on that show because going back and looking at older episodes when she was just a lawyer or when she was the DA, that worked. Her is the DA that helps them out and that does things the right way, sort of a female Harvey Dent. That totally works and makes sense and fits within the show. But it, it just stopped working at some point. I don't know. Alan, do you have any specific thoughts about Arrow Season 4? The, there's only one uh, Season 4, Episode 5. The Constantine episode? episode? They bring John Constantine That is restore Sarah's soul. That's the thing. Yeah. That episode... That, that could have been the whole season, and I would have been happy with it if it was that one episode. Yes. If, if he had shown up every other episode... But then Perfect. they just had to say uh, that he was in hell. Right. Then they referenced his friend that Oliver, that he talked about, Oliver was going to go visit to get, to be taught more about magic. Right. That hell was called the NBC Ratings Board. Yeah. I mean, I know that he was busy. <laughs> he was working on another okay. job. But even if he was working on another job, there had to be a way to get him back. Like, even every six episodes would have been better than one episode, and then the rest of the season is just malarkey. Just, yeah. Chris, do you have any thoughts? A, a grown person call a TV show malarkey? I'm running out of words to describe how terrible <laughs> Earl's season four is. Where's I've the used them all. The season like was hot. And what really sold Horrible. it for me, and this we'll get more into in our Legends talk, was when there's an episode which is basically Arrow that is better than the last two seasons of Arrow. I will concede that everything I've seen from Arrow paled in comparison to how interesting that Legends of Tomorrow episode was. God, that episode, I mean that episode, <laughs> it, it, was, it made me nostalgia for season two. And I was like, oh, this is, this is like that again. It's Slade. He's discount Slade, so he's not as good of an actor, but he's still, it's, it's a version of Slade. And it works. Now, now Arrow Slade is discount Slade after we saw that costume from the Justice League stuff. Well, yeah. It's the discount of the discount. It's the Chinese version of generic pudding. Um, it's not the dollar store Slade. It's the 98 cent store Slade. Right. Oh, no, it's a five and dime Slade. Yep. <laughs> and on the package it says, Slade Wilkins. <laughs> Oh, God, yeah. I, I don't have anything else to say about Arrow. Um, Can we move to Legends? Before yeah. I just start slitting my wrist. <laughs> wow, I think that's our shortest, uh, our shortest, shortest There's of not, all these. There's nothing to talk about Arrow besides... How bad it is. Stop. Please. I guess, like, the impression I get from Arrow is, like, there's not much to say unless it's, like, you just please go back to the like... Yeah, just... I mean, if you want to just do season two over again, just copy it verbatim, I'd be fine with that. I'll I'll notice it's it. It's not even interesting to watch, though, like Gotham, because at least Gotham, you're like, how much Gotham LSD is, did they take? Gotham but is Aaron so is like, weird that it has kind of a carny vibe to it, and I'm not sure if anyone's going to be offended by that old word. Um, um, it's got a weird, bizarre attraction to it where if I actually yeah. did want to, I could sit down and watch all of Gotham and be like, this is silly, but at least it's somewhat entertaining in a really terrible way. Right. Um, Arrow has no plot line at all. Yeah. And has the most the hated world. woman, or the most hated actress by the fans in quite a while. Yes. Also, and, actually, speaking of actresses, can they stop killing canaries? God, and th- that's another thing. Killing off um, the original canary just hurt that show so much. I mean, that's part of why Legends is so good, I think, because 
she is so charismatic. Uh, yeah. Does anybody else have any other thing to say about Arrow so we can at least say we covered it? Because I, I don't know. I have... The villains were bad. I got one. But, um, uh, Red Arrow, Speedy, whatever you want to call us. Um, Otter Queen sidekick. Um, I really enjoyed the, uh, the one part out of the season four where they get, I guess, uh, roofied, I guess. Oh, yeah. Into, um, in the underground city, whatever you call it. Monument by Malcolm. Malcolm showing up again after leaving. Yeah. After coming back, after leaving. I'm, I'm still confused on that. But, the fight yeah, they get drugged and, like, live down there. And it's like, okay, that's a cool choice. Yeah, to do. that was interesting. Um, and then they just kind of just chill down there for the whole season. Mm-hmm. I will say, uh, in the episode where Flash crossed over, was this season? Was it season four? I guess where the um, they had the uh, Vandal Savage big crossover with everybody. Yeah. Arrow. Yeah. Let's talk about that the Flash last. episode where Meryl just keeps popping into the uh, the Arrow's headquarters and. Flashes. Barry's like, do you enter it in any other way? Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's good for the arrow. Unless somebody else has something else. Uh, All I hear is a little bit of uh, water. I assume is um, Connor pouring himself a big old glass of uh, bourbon to drink. Uh, no. No, that was me no. refilling. Uh, to keep my soul in that. Um, I, have, I have actual water, thank you. If I had bourbon, I would have to keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Give me to how quickly my mouth dried out so hard last night, halfway through the show, I was like, oh god, I'm just sucking on ice cubes that I had. Alright, let's move to Legends, because I think that, I think we've served Arrow yeah. enough. Legends, a very inconsistent show, but the highs are very high. That's, that's... The second third of this show sucked and the first third and second and last third were fantastic yeah that's... yeah it, i think it was a little bit longer of the season that the writers planned on yeah um I, yeah it... that second chunk of the season where it's just like i, I can't remember which it was the episode surrounding when adam and kendra got stuck back in time and like i guess like that four to five episode stretch was just so like I almost fell off the show entirely because I was like, these are so dull and uneventful. Yeah. Um, and then it kicked right back into like to, 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 you know, right back into the gear it was in the first, uh, portion of the season. And it kind of just finished that way. It finished on a high note. Yeah. It, I think, I think the best episodes are the one-offs, which are completely disconnected from the larger arc. Um, and they're, good because they're more focused and it doesn't feel like they're trying to just move the plot forward um yes and this is where my doctor jokes come in because these episodes felt like doctor who episodes right uh, or really good classic star trek episodes even. yes it's sci-fi uh you know rigmarum yeah John X. that's all i'm uh, saying okay the western episode uh, one um this just goes into a gag I had the entire season where Rip Hunter was like, don't leave the ship. And everyone was like, screw you. And they just got off the ship anyway. Like, yeah. Rip Hunter's constantly being bamboozled by his own crew. Yeah. Yeah, that got bothersome. It became a little bit repetitive at that point. Um, but there are things about it that are good. Like, Kendra, I think, is really the surprise of the show. Uh because I did not think she was that great in the Flash Arrow crossover. I think she's the worst part of that crossover. Her and really Hawkman. Give, like, that's to her character until after they uh, move her to Legends. Yeah. Well, that's what I, that's also what I mentioned about Cold, where his his character transformation happens fully in Legends. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, even Rory's does because Rory goes from actually all of Rory's transformation happens in Legends because he is. One note in Flash, and that's fire. Yeah. Yes. He 
he has the most interesting things happen to him throughout the season. He yeah, gets, you think he's dead, and he comes back to a bad guy, and then he becomes a good guy again, and then he becomes completely remorseful over, um, you know, uh, uh, Snark's possible death. Yeah. I think for the most part, Legends uh, kind of gave some of the, like, I guess, side characters, side villains, whatever you want to call them. Well, they were all side characters. In room to grow as a character. Yeah. And it it from definitely it works because of that, because they are all side characters. And their thing is usually to have the Flash or Arrow bounce off of them to to just be bouncing off each other and to have eight of them constantly bouncing feelings or bouncing uh, their interpersonal arcs against each other and constantly commenting on what is going on to in, in regards to all of them. It just works for some reason. The fact that uh, Katie Lotz as Canary and Hot Girl have very similar arcs throughout the season and that they become great friends is a big part of what makes the show good, I think. Yeah, I also enjoyed um, uh, the Firestorm duo, their yes. relationship, how it kind of duels throughout the entire season, basically, where, um, um, oh, why is his name kicking me right now? Um, not Stein. Yes. Oh, uh, um, Jax. Jax. Jax, yeah, Jackson. Um, Jackson's very um, kind of hesitant most of the time. Yeah. Well, he got roofied to begin with. <laughs> I, know, I love when they call that, that back at the end. That was part of the, that pilot. Yeah, and it's a... Uh, you drugged me, I had to. Yeah, and when he travels back and meets younger Jax and has to convince younger Jax to make older Stein think that he's tricking him, that that really worked. Yeah. And, I, and it sort of undid the weird the weirdness of being roofied. Yeah, it does offer a bit more backstory to it other than like Stein going like, well, gotta take matters in my own hands. I do, I, I love Professor Stein. Um, oh, he's great. I've, kind of, I've liked him since his outing on The Flash. Um, I think his grandfathery role is very appropriate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I really enjoyed uh, Rory taking a front seat and uh, having his own TARDIS um, and uh, his own companions. <laughs> yes. That was fun. Uh, he's not the guy who dies 50 times anymore. Uh Oh my god! I'm so I'm still glad someone else made that realization in Doctor Who. God. Yeah, yeah, because that guy was Hogman. Rory died three times. <laughs> Dude, how many times in Legends Tomorrow season one did Hawkman get stabbed? At it's least three, because of flashbacks. Uh, yeah. Okay. Every single point popped up, right? Well, yeah, because he's only in four episodes, maybe, and he does get stabbed in every episode. Yeah, and then when he comes back later on, he's under the control of Vandal Savage. He got stabbed again. Yeah. <sighs> it, it became... Incredible. Magic yes. pincushion. I do love... I I was a little bit angry that they did end up killing Savage at the end. I thought that this would become, like, the big bad throughout the entire show. And that they would never be able to get him until the very end. But... I guess it makes sense to kill him in this first season because they've never been afraid to just kill off villains in this in this universe. So, but yeah, I thought, but with time travel, they can use him again, which is great. I don't know. I wasn't too thrilled with Vandal Savage for the most part um, as a villain. Oh um, man, he he was I one of the sole reasons I watched the show. Yeah, didn't like the actor too much. Um, what I liked I is know. that he's basically a B movie villain, and that's that's what I thought made him perfect. Like he is. There is some of that charm to him, where his, like his his sole purpose is like I want to rule the world. Yes, and he's he's a perfect. I know Savage was, was Russian. <laughs> I know he was Doctor Doom. Yes, well, exactly. it makes sense that he wouldn't have a distinct accent because he is. His accent, first of all, I'm not even sure what accent that's supposed to be. It's, it's, like it's the world. Accent. He he knows it's every language. To be an Egyptian. Yeah, and he. Oh. It, yeah, it's interesting. I did like at the end where we have like three different Vandal Savages getting their asses kicked at the same time. That was cool. Um, yeah, that was. 
I thought he was a good villain. I, I think the reason I thought that is because they don't overuse him. I thought that they always chose the right moment to inject him and when to take him out of the story so that you never got bored of him or... Yeah. That I'll give, because there was whole episodes, even the Jonah Hex episode, where he's not pressing, is he? Yeah. There's entire episodes where he wouldn't be there, because he wouldn't know that they would be there, and he would have no reason to show up. But And that Jonah Hex one being a prime example. He wouldn't be in the Old West at that time, presumably. He'd be yeah, in Russia. Yeah, what the, the, uh, the time pirates take the take the wave rider? Yes. And that I think that's actually the episode I liked the least, for some reason. Um... Although I, I didn't mind it. I, well, again, it's it's more uh, Captain Cold development and showing that he actually has like a a very uh, a very light side to him. Yes. Uh... Also, uh, Professor Stein uh, masquerading as a space pirate is the, yeah. The, <laughs> that was just pretty... the best. I'm trying to think. Is there... um, I did. He even, uh, even goes did love... full in on it. That yeah, he does. Part. I do. I do love what they did with Brandon Routh. Uh, he kind of became the secondary star of the show. Like it, it became his show, and it became Rick Flag's show, in or Rick Flag, Rick Hunter's show. So many Ricks. Rip Hunter. Rip Hunter. Yes. Yeah, he does step out, uh, especially towards the end when he like goes in the cell and like starts to beat down on Savage. Um, yeah. Like my first point was where they gave the characters room to grow as characters, yes. rather than having them confined under terrible writing and Arrow and Flash. Right. Well, I've always said anybody who shows up on Flash from a, from another show seems to uh, stand out more and be infinitely like more likable. Um, mm-hmm. Also, guess, be written better. Yes, like when um, this is a slight part in the conversation, but when in season one of Flash, when they go to Starling City and. Joe and Cisco meet up with um, Captain, uh, Lance. Captain Lance. Like I was like, wow, Captain Lance isn't a gigantic dickhead. He's actually nice and cool, and I kind of like him in this episode. And then I see him back on air, I'm like, you're a piece of shit. Um, but then, yeah, no, and then everybody in, in Legends, again, has, that you could say, they have room to grow, and they have room to uh, have more qualities aside from, like, uh, Felicity and Arm Candy in a few episodes of Flash, which was Brandon Ralph. Um, you know, two note bank robbers in uh, Captain Cold and Heat Wave. Yeah, and I mean Jackson had one episode in Flash season two, so yeah, and I I liked the whole arc of he of the Adam realizing that people didn't care that much after he died, like the world forgot about him, and the fact that that really affected him, that I don't know that really worked because. It might be just because he sold it so well, but it it is a testament to how good Brandon Routh can be. Uh, Brandon Routh is great, and it sucks that Superman Returns pretty much ruined everything for him. Yeah, and it makes me think why why haven't we given this guy more than just Dylan Dog Dead of Night as a way to redeem himself? Oh or, my god! Or, I can't believe you just referenced that movie. Yeah, I just have to say, Deep uh, Pole. It's just like a little fun. It's a fun little fact. The role that he plays in uh, Zack and Mary make a porno was originally supposed to be Ben Affleck. Oh, yeah, I remember that. That's He he plays a great character in that movie. He's great, and he was one of my favorite parts of Scott Pilgrim. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's the vegan... Vegan police. Vegan police, de-veganizing, Ray. Um, yeah, Thomas Jane. Scott Pilgrim. I haven't seen him in too much else, though, so I can't really say much. Yeah. He's but again, like, shows Superman up. Returns was his big thing, and then Superman Returns was kind of like, I don't exactly remember the reception to it at first, because I saw it, and I was like, Yeah. And then, like, years later, everyone just kind of forgot it existed. And they forgot Brandon Routh existed. Yeah. Let's, let's save our thoughts on Superman Returns. We should probably watch that again someday. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't wait to watch him not throw a punch. Yeah. Um, Here's the thing. Could be worse. I, he could walk around the earth for forty five minutes. Yeah. What I can say is that uh, what I remember is that his Clark is great in that movie. He's yes. he does a really good job of playing Clark, and it's not just 
a copy of the Christopher Reeve Clark. It is his own thing, um, but it does feel very reverential. It is his Superman that doesn't quite work, even, other than just looks. So, well, his Superman that movie is weird and creepy and hangs out Lois Lane's window with her new boyfriend. It's bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, it's Cyclops. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. Okay. It, you'd better get off that before I get into a fucking X Men three rant. Legends of Tomorrow. Um. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. No. Yeah. You said Katie Lotz was great. I thought um her little her her mini arc where she goes back to the League of Shad uh, League of League of Assassins League of Shadows. Whatever. Yeah. Thank you, Christopher Nolan, for confusing me for the rest of my life. Um. Going back to the League of Assassins, um, and then having me talk back out of it, like, convinced she's a killer, and then basically having her tell her, like, no, you're a human being, just because you died once and came back doesn't mean you have to go back to this. Right. That that did really work well, and seeing Roz again, uh, even though I didn't like him in season three, but, yeah, that that or worked really Talia. well. Did we see Talia, or did we see young Talia? Was I can't Talia remember. present? I can't remember yeah, if Talia was present. That, that, she, was, she was a little girl. Oh yeah, and then that's a little bit creepy. <laughs> it means that when she sees her later on in the future, that she kind of seeded their romance as with her as a little no, no, girl. No. That's she not. Trained? That's not Nessa. That's Talia. Oh, wait, was that Talia? Yeah. Yeah, that's Talia. Well, no, that, that, doesn't she say something about like you're gonna meet somebody someday? You're gonna we're gonna meet again. I remember her saying something like that. I might be, I might be completely yeah, I'm wrong. Lee and, Lee and you. Okay. Oh yeah, that's well, right. If, about, if, we, if we are talking about returning characters, we might as well start talking about this Arrow episode. Yeah. Hey, where'd you get? The, where? Oh my God, where did you get those weapons? eBay. Yeah. Uh, I. I. Am drawing a blank as at that moment. It's when they. Captain Cold and uh, he waved get off the bus. Oh yes. Oh yeah, they <laughs> are sitting pretty with the, the criminals. I did like old Oliver a lot in that episode. Stephen Amell, who we should have given more time to him in our arrow section, so let's do it now. Stephen Amell is consistently the most improved actor, probably of this whole universe, but definitely of Arrow. Because going back and watching clips of him in season one he's a board like he's he's a blank board and he doesn't have the most chemistry with other actors or the ability to display emotions uh and he has slowly increased his abilities as an actor Uh, at least i think so i think it started with for me it started with flash crossovers when him and barry would bounce off each other yes and the way that they react to each other is is perfect. And even by the time yeah. where they introduce Barry in his first episode, and they give us sort of his backdoor pilot, their chemistry works so well. And it brings something out of a Stephen Amell that's really great. It brings out an, uh, an older brother role, which I wouldn't think he would have, where he's basically, con- like, Barry is usually looking up to him and kind of asking him, like, how, do, you know, how does this all work? Um, mm-hmm even in his first episode where he goes to Starling to ask for advice. Yeah. It's, it just works. And that's probably one of the best moments from the Flash season one. I almost said for Arrow season three because I thought it was so... Because it is so much more like an Arrow scene. Yeah. Well, that's also where he, they meet up again and he says, like, you know, guys like us don't ever get the girl. And they meet up again later and he says, I thought you told us that, you know guys like us don't get the girl um and he's like yeah well things change that worked so well uh what else yeah but old, old oliver queen was fantastic um his little one arm thing the dark knight right the dark knight returns reference was awesome oh, yes. um and like you said we got we got we got uh we got bargain bin deathstroke which is still good yeah still good he's he's a little bit shorter uh slightly worse actor uh well maybe maybe <laughs> largely worse I don't know it depends on how your opinion of Manu Bennett I personally think he's great other people might disagree but yeah he it worked I was just glad to see Deathstroke on um well at all yes he has a silver Here mask Benton was also nice to see uh uh, uh 
uh, Sarah uh, see Oliver again. Yes. And I love the moment where she says, is this what happens when we leave? Is this, is, did you know that this would happen if I wasn't there? I need to get back to stop this. And you really feel from her, like, she truly believes that if she had stayed, she could have prevented all of this. And she just well, sells it. Well, sometimes it was like, Rip Hunter was very secretive about lots of stuff he was doing for that entire season. Like, he was like, oh, the Time Master sent me. Right. Did? The Ready constant to on, um, Legends, the uh, helmet for Kronos, which ends up being um, Heat Wave, uh, yeah. we find out later. Did anyone else notice it looks a lot like the um, Falcor from NeverEnding Story? Kind of. I did not notice that. In a weird way, I, I, can, see, I can see it because I'm visualizing the shape in my head. Uh, I, yeah. I can look at it again. Uh, so real quick, let's talk about, we should have talked about this after we did the Arrow, but, uh, just the, the Flash Arrow crossover that happened. Because we, we kind Arrow's of... Arrow's drawn forces. Yeah. And that sort of was a backdoor pilot for Legends in a way. Um. Yes. I like, I like so much about that crossover episode. Um, and... The fact that that crossover episode was so good is one of the things that makes me consider going back and watching this season of Arrow, because well, the, isn't the Arrow isn't the Arrow side of things like does Vandal Savage like actually kill everybody? Yeah, and, and Flash, and Flash has to go back in time, and before he does, Stephen Amell gets to say the line uh, that so many other actors have delivered so well. He gets to, and he well, does my, it. My name is Oliver Queen. I've been trapped on the island for five years. No, he says he, he says. <laughs> Run, Barry. Run. And he After just... five years in hell. It would be great if he did his speech. Real, real quick, what I wanted them to do with the Supergirl Flash crossover was for him to do the little speech that he does and for them to pair it with the music. Just kind of what they did, but he did it very nonchalant. And I'm Barry Allen. I'm, uh, uh, I'm the fastest man alive. Uh, you know, whatever. But... Anybody, any other thoughts about the crossovers? Either crossover, really. Well, speaking of crossovers, I think we're going to jump into what's potentially coming up. Right. Well, which is this big, this big, 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 big crossover. Which um, is which is going to be the same. Are we going to talk about the uh, Supergirl Flash crossover? Right. We can talk about either one of the crossovers that previously happened. Uh, there are still other things to no, talk about in that. For uh, Siren in that episode of the crossover. Uh, say Siren again? Or yeah, say Black that again. Siren, or whatever it was. She was terrible. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Oh, when, um, when, was it? Flash Black. Was yeah, oh, uh, wait, she was in that too? No, yeah, no, you're thinking like, of, uh, what's her name? Are you thinking of the invasion of metahumans at the end of Flash season two? No, Flash Supergirl crossover. It was, um... Oh, not Banshee. Silver, where it was like Silver Banshee. Yeah, Banshee. Silver Banshee. Yeah, Silver Banshee. Oh man, that was a one-dimensional villain. And Livewire. Oh yeah. Uh, I was not a fan of Livewire when I saw her. Yeah. No one is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I thought you were referencing uh, Katie Cassie's role in Flash season two, which was. Uh, I, I switched. I. They have the same power, they just wear different clothes. Yeah, oh, well. I can see the confusion. It's... I did, uh... Yeah, I didn't like that character throughout Supergirl, so when she was revealed to be Silver Van- Banshee, I was kind of let down a little bit, because I was like, okay, this character who I haven't liked, who I found very boring, and one note throughout this season continues to be boring, and one note and uninteresting, even after giving her superpowers. I mean, I would have rather have seen her aunt, who we see in the uh, in the shop. Uh, I'd rather have seen her be the Silver Banshee. See this, like, 50-year-old woman fighting Supergirl or something like that, because I didn't care about this character. The Sh- Shiban character. She's in, what, like, two episodes? I feel like she's in five, because we first meet her, like, at the end of an episode, and then she has this weird 
working girl relationship with Supergirl, and it it's so weird. And the those are the episodes where I didn't like Cat Grant as much because she was just so unnecessarily bitchy, for lack of a better word. I didn't get that far, so I can't comment. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, no, I'm okay. I think we can do speculation now for the new for the next crossover, and then we're going into the next season of all of them. The uh, season five of Air. Oh God, it's season five. Yeah. Oh, that's season. I will five. say, man, um, I I I don't know how five, they're gonna win you guys season that going, two but... Supergirl, season two Legends, and we were told by. Berlanti, I believe, as it was at Comic Con, that they're going to unite into one. Uh, I believe it's a two-part uh, crossover uh, amongst the old four shows. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which sounds fascinating. Yeah. I'm, I'm still. Con- I, I will say it's, I think even for um, probably their best episodes yeah. per show. Like. Yeah. Because they, I think they bring it. They're like all hands on deck. We have to make these great, and. I don't know how they're going to do it, because this is basically them doing a movie on TV. That's, And I don't know how they're going to coordinate that and how that's going to work, but I, I'm fascinated by it. While, I'm not even sure if the Avengers are have united in this scale, because what is there, six of them? Seven? Yeah. Oh, that's basically, a, you've got the entire Legends cast, that's Flash, assume, Team Arrow, yeah. and Supergirl. Because we assume the Legends are going to add more characters. They're going to replace the characters that they lost. So that's eight, at least, including maybe other new characters that they add. They might bring Stargirl over with them. They might bring Citizen Steel over with them. Uh, Combined with the new stack set of villains that Legends has, which also ties into every other show, because Reverse Flash has been confirmed as one Legion of Doom members. Right. Uh, Captain Cold, Meryl, and Dark are also members of Legion of Doom this uh, time. So. Yeah. And then mutual friend Andy Sitz brought it up earlier today. We're going to see Martian Manhunter on the same screen as Supergirl. Because... Our, uh, uh, as... <laughs> As a or no, not Supergirl. Oh. As Hot Girl and Hawkman and all these other characters. Oh, okay. I, I got okay, my. I was like. I got my girls mixed up. Show? Um, I got the girls. There's so few of them. They're so easy to confuse, yeah. guys. Um, well, yeah. Well, when you said Supergirl and Hawkman and Martian Manhunter together, I, I mean, I'm just thinking of like just as in scale. Like we're gonna see them actually do something like kind of important. Yeah. Together. Like. I mean, we're gonna have. Flash talking to Martian Manhunter, which is, if you're a Justice League TV show Timverse fan, that's a big deal. Um, that's a gigantic I, uh, I mean, obligatory comment about how the, the TV universe is coming together so much more uh, beautifully than the movie universe. That just goes without saying at this point. Mm-hmm. The TV I, don't multiverse. How, I, I don't understand how, like, and we had a discussion yesterday about Marvel TV and Marvel movies, like, but here the disconnect is even deeper. Like, it's, it's so fucking separate. And, like, one is almost, like, I know everyone I know who watches these shows is like, yeah, they're great. I love them. Um, and the same people who go see the movies are like, yeah, they're mostly crap. Yeah. And it just. I mean, the DC Warner Brothers executive who is paid to not to say that said we well, know it's not good yeah it's slightly different he's the he boss of the guy who says that he's the boss of the guy who should, who should be saying no everything's fine everything's good so him being very real and very blatant about that makes sense to me that was like a, a father spanking his child uh by saying that on air or saying that where everybody can hear it and put it out there but yes like that was him basically punishing Kevin Sujihara by shaming him publicly. Which might help, I don't know. But then again, like I said, the TV side, you had Jeff Johns, who's basically kind of, his hands are in everything, which ex- explains a lot. Yeah. And I, I think Andrew Kreisberg and Berlanti are also a big part of it, and the fact that yes. them and Guggenheim, and another guy whose name I'm forgetting the fact that they work so closely together and that it's it's the same four people who are supposedly in charge of all of these shows. And which is why I think Arrow did suffer because 
they lost control and they lost track of that show and focused on the other shows too much, I think. Well, Stephen Amell has said that he's happy that about he's happy about season five of Arrow because they're not launching another show and they're they'll be be paying more attention to Arrow. Yes, and that is something that gives me a, a, a tinge of excitement about that season. Now, what are our, what is our ideas of how I've heard Flashpoint is only supposed to go three episodes, but um. I mean, what do we think this is going to do to the other shows? I don't see how it can affect Legends of Tomorrow too much, because they sort of exist outside of timelines. Yeah. Um, what I think would be interesting is if Legends, if they come back, if there's an episode where it's just them going back to their lives and interacting with where they were taken from, and them noticing and pointing out what's different, that would be sort of how we see the effect on them, but none of them personally will be affected. I don't think any of their origins would be affected. Uh, no, because I think because they were ripped out of, I think it's basically fixed points. Right, and it would be um, like Back to the Future, where Marty comes back and there's a black family living in his house. It would be similar to that, where you come back and uh, maybe somebody's hair is different, or their job is different, but they themselves will remain the same, supposedly. Yeah, but then you have the question of how Captain Cold comes back. Um, Me, yeah. Uh, my and like I said, my big thing earlier before I had a big question about Thawne is that every season three Flash trailer has shown Thawne. Uh, I would assume seemingly depowered um, and stuck in a cage. The guess that I have, and this isn't a completely original guess because I've heard other people theorize this is that that Thawne has been in that cage for 17 years. Uh, oh, God. And that Barry captured him. He put him, like, he held him after knocking him out. Which would make sense, and you wouldn't just let him go. You would probably hold him somewhere. Uh, yeah. Which is a little barbaric, I would say. Uh, unless you have someone assigned to check in on him and make sure that he's fed and still alive but it looks like he's being cared for like shit so yeah uh yeah lo looks like he's not getting any right big belly burger yeah but uh um, oh man don't want that place to be real <laughs> it does sound very appetizing but um and, or as jason muse said in, in uh episode 20 this one's man. This one sucks. The one Star, Star City is better. I completely forgot he was in his episode of Flash. Yeah. yeah. When uh, Kevin played two characters, so funny. Which yeah. was the um, where Barry's stuck in the time vortex. Oh, He's the stuck in dinosaur. The... That is a fantastic episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the dinosaur. Yeah, that was Kevin Smith, and uh, he got Jason Mewes to be uh, in the, I guess as a side yeah. character, and then he was also in the big. Yeah, he's uh, in villain the... uh, ensemble in a mask, though, so you can tell who Jason Muse was. Right. Uh, was when uh, Zoom's in all his... black. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who wants to bet that Jason Muse just wandered on set and Kevin Smith was like, all right, I'll use you, and then just hung around and just put a costume on and they filmed him anyway and no one had any idea? Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. He's like, cool, man, I'm in Flash. He's... Jason Muse is probably one of the biggest comic book fans, like. Yeah. Like. He loves everything. Like the line in Mallrats where he goes, snickety snick, like, that's X-Men. Like, ah, it's a Wolverine yeah. reference, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Alright, anybody else have anything to say about uh, crossovers and stuff? Any... I think it's about time we wrap up, right? Yeah. Unless anybody's got a crazy theory about what the crossover will be. Something that... A musical. That's my crazy theory. I, I would... I would... I would love that and hate that at the same time. <laughs> Uh, Look, I don't want any musicals. I don't want any musicals unless it is okay. Batman versus Superman the musical, all right? Music Master shows <laughs> up and turns everybody into a musical, and then they start singing, and then Grant Gustin busts out his old uh, Glee um, song that he sang. And then it goes right into Batman versus Superman the musical. Martha! Yeah. Martha! You must save Martha! <laughs> 
No Marthas will die tonight. Oh, God. I, will, I must make this happen before I die. Yeah. Um, well, thank all right. I believe that concludes our, our episode one, the first ever episode of our DC TV, which is the wrap up of the past season. Uh, for all of this and more, you can always uh, tune into the show every week. We've got a lot of coming up. Uh, I believe it's uh, October 4th, The Flash. No, October 7th. October 4th, The Flash returns on the CW, followed by no, Arrow. October 3rd. October 3rd? Yeah, October 3rd, and then October 4th is Arrow. Yep. And then the it's next... October 3rd, don't forget to tune in. And then the next week is Supergirl and Legends. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we're going to be very, very busy coming up soon. If you're not in the Phantom Zone, um, get your ass over there. Yeah. Just search the Phantom Zone. It's pretty... And our, 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 blue fate. Our, our next episode uh-huh. will be Luke Cage, right? Uh, that's, okay, that's, we're going to be doing a um, half season uh, recap or review of Luke Cage uh, one week, and then we'll do it the following week as well. Uh, give time for people to uh, listen to it or watch it, I mean. Yeah. Uh, listen to this, but I mean, watch the. Listen to our recap, but watch the show. I mean, it makes more sense that way. Yeah. Watch or, with your ears and listen with your eyes. Or watch it all yeah, and exactly. wait and listen to both episodes back to back. That's that's fine, too. You can binge our show and binge the I don't care what you do as long as you listen to our damn voices. You can really put our show on, and it syncs up perfectly to the uh, Dark Side of the Moon, Wizard of Oz, and uh, Luke Cage. <laughs> yep. Yes. If you can sync all four of those things successfully, uh, Godspeed. But uh, I will pay you a million dollars if you can sync all four of those together. I can't follow that up. Anyway. Sure. Adios. Connor, would you like to send us out with a great quote? Ah, uh, it's me, Barry. It's me.